Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. One of the skills that separates intermediate or lower level players from higher level players is how comfortable you are hitting a very low ball. In other words, a skilled player knows how to wait for the ball. They know that the ball is going to reach them and a lower level player usually doesn't have such good ball judgment and they worry that the ball is going to fall down and that's why they always keep running into the ball and hitting it at high contact point. So in today's video I want to show you why it's important to learn this skill even though you might not be needing it that much in a real match or even because your coach keeps telling you to take the ball early or hit the ball on top of the bounce and so on. So yes, that is part of tennis. But what I want to point out is that every higher level skilled tennis player knows how to wait for the ball. They are perfectly comfortable waiting for the ball to come to them. They're not always rushing into it. And intermediate players are not good at it, that this or actually they don't have this skill. So I want to show you why it's important to have this skill, how to master it and what other skills you will be developing by learning how to wait for the ball. So let's take a look at this comparison to see what are the advantages or benefits of waiting for the ball in terms of developing your skills and your, your mental calmness. So here are two shots that I played at different times, but the ball is almost the same. So I'm going to show you here in this overlay. So if I kind of mark this uh, contact point, you can see that both balls are basically in the same box. So they're coming into the box, very similar trajectories, and they are in this box. So I'm hitting one ball here, I stepped in, and for the other ball, I'm waiting for this ball to come to me. So here's the contact point. So, so the, the challenge for intermediate players is that they don't believe that the ball is going to reach them because they are not familiar with this trajectory. Uh, because they haven't seen it much, because if you're always coming in to take the ball early, so you basically just see this trajectory and then you don't see what's happening here, then how do you know? So usually what players think is that when the ball is going to come here into contact point, then it's going to drop down like this. That is their mental image and that's one reason why they keep pushing in to intercept the ball because they are afraid that the ball is going to drop down. So they are afraid because they have never really waited for the ball to see how long the actual ball flight is. So a more experienced, a skilled player can read the ball much better. And so when they see that the ball is coming here and they've, they've seen the previous trajectory, they know that the ball is going to reach them and that they can hit the ball at nice, very comfortable contact point, which is easy, so very comfortable contact point. I can swing downwards. I don't have to kind of go like this into the contact point. I have more time. From here, I will have a very natural upward trajectory that is going to give me a height and safety and good depth. So these are all the benefits. So again, if I clear this, so just that you see from this perspective again, so very similar balls coming towards me. So on the left side, I'm waiting on the right side. I want to come in. So I already started much earlier. So you can see I was roughly in the same spot. And then I started to come in, which is what most intermediate and beginner players do. They're coming in because they, they are afraid. So... Again, I, I know of two reasons, typical reasons. You can let me know if you're aware of more. So the, the basic reason for a beginner, be intermediate player, before they have much knowledge is that they think the ball is going to go down like this. So they want to come in and intercept it. And the second reason is that they're being told by coaches or they just watch videos online or listen to the commentators on TV. They're being told that they should take the ball early. So yes, when we attack, we can take the ball early, but we don't have to take the ball early all the time. It's, it's useless. It uh, spends a lot of energy jumping in like this all the time. It affects the technique because from here, the player will just do this instead of looping down. 
it makes the player rushed and so on. So, like I mentioned in the beginning, every good player knows how to wait for the ball. They're not rushing into the ball. They, they can make a choice whether they want to take it early, whether it's worth the risk or not. And so if I go back to the overlay, so you can see here's contact number one if I stepped in and here's contact number two if I waited for the ball. And now I want to show you what is the time difference. So how much how much time do I gain? So we go here to contact and I'm going to put the timer here. And if I go to this contact, you can see that it's 0.38. So almost four tenths of a second, this ball flies from here to here, takes almost four tenths of a second, four tenths of a second on a typical recreational rally ball is 25% of the time. So just in this distance, in this distance, that's 25% of the ball flight, if the typical ball flight is maybe like 1.6 seconds. So sometimes it's a bit slower. So let's say if it's about two seconds, 0.4 is 20% of that time. So 0.4 is 20% of that time. And this 20% of that time is hiding in this area. Now, why is that? Because the ball is constantly losing speed as soon as it left opponent's racket, it's losing speed. So even though it's flown a lot and this distance that you see here, so maybe if I draw like this, so this distance here is not 25% or 20% of the whole distance, but because the ball has slowed down so much, because the ball has slowed down and it keeps slowing down here, that's why it takes so long. And this is what we want to experience. We want to experience this time from here to here. There is a lot of time which players don't take advantage of. And when we have this much time, what does this time give us? First of all, it gives us more relaxation. So technically it has two main benefits or let's say even three. If I go back to this frame. So technically I'm going to have a much nicer swing because I'm going to swing down and up. So I am developing nicer swing. Whereas on this side, I have to go kind of like this. So technically I'm developing the fundamentals of tennis, which is swinging low to high. That's a very uh, common uh, term of tennis coaches. Well, it's very easy to swing from low to high when the ball is low and it's not easy to swing low to high when the ball is high, uh, instinctively players tend to swing more horizontally. So the first benefit is because I have time, I can swing like this. And because the ball is lower, I can swing more fundamentally. And that also helps me feel the swing. Whereas here on this side, players tend not to swing, they just push the ball forward. So they go here, they align the racket with the ball and they push forward and they're all tense. They don't know how to get comfortable with this. And that is in a way ruining their technique and ingraining bad habits. And if you wait for the ball, you're gonna feel much nicer, softer loop, get a nice wrist leg, no rush, and give the ball a nice trajectory that's gonna give you safety and depth. So you have technical benefits of waiting for the ball. Then you have mental benefits because you don't feel rushed. You're aware of this time and you're starting to calm down. You're calm, you're not rushed. And that also helps with your technique because that mental calmness translates in your body's comfort. You're not tight. And that makes all the movements in the body much more smooth and fluid. And the third benefit of, is, of course, uh, saving energy because you can see I'm kind of in the same spot, roughly behind the same distance behind the baseline. And here I'm now jumping in and expanding a lot of energy. And on this side, I just made one step. So I just made one step. I waited for the ball and I'm now conserving energy, learning to play more effortless and that helps me stay longer in the rally. So this is a free hitting session, of course. But if I can stay physically longer in the rally, that is going to train my concentration 
because now I'm able to rally not just five balls, but maybe 15 balls. And to rally 15 balls, you have to be mentally capable of holding concentration for such a long time. And as you do this over time, you are, of course, improving your concentration. And in this clip, I want to show you the difference between handling the, a low ball in the wrong way and in the right way. So on the left side, if I play it one time like this, you can see that I'm just running through in kind of a panic mode and not watching the ball. And on the right side, I'm controlling the ball well because I'm used to it. So if we kind of look at what's going on is that on this side, I am not at all thinking how will I set up and stabilize for the ball because in the player's mind typically is just panic and wanting to reach the ball. So they are running at full speed and they don't realize there's a lot of time still here. Um, so that's why they're just running and not considering positioning. So you can see on this side, the time positioning to the ball and I'm actually hitting the ball at lower contact point than on this side. And yet I'm calmer because I know I can see this time. Obviously, I'm doing tennis all my life, so I can see a lot of time here. So if I just put maybe a timer here that you realize how much time is there. Just from that, those few frames to my contact, you see it's more than two tenths of a second of time and I'm aware of it and I can see it, whereas player on this side in these two tenths of a second for them are extremely short so they're and they think the ball is going to go like this so to them two tenths is nothing to me it's a lot two tenths of a second is 10 to 15 percent of the whole ball flight time from the other side so I am calmly watching the ball and tracking it tracking it really well and that's because when we track the ball we are aware of the time, so I can track the ball here. So if you watch my eyes, you can see that my head, if I do like this, you can see that I'm tracking the ball. Like basically uh, every frame, I am tracking the ball. And because I am aware of this, I'm tracking the ball. That simply means I'm aware of time. And a player who is kind of coming here, they somehow they're still watching the ball here and then their eyes go up. They're not tracking the ball here anymore and therefore they lose the perception of time. They feel there is no time here and that's why they panic. So then you can see that here I am stable in control of my body and that's why I have good ball control and here I'm not stable. I'm still running so that will also affect my stroke and I will lose control. You will get low balls also on the backhand side and most of the times we're going to handle them with the backhand slice. So in this comparison, I'm trying to show you the wrong way and the right way of handling a low ball. So on the left side, I'm doing it the wrong way. So until now, you can't tell really much. But as you can see, as I'm approaching the ball and I'm about to hit it, the first thing that you will notice, so I'm recording this, I'm demonstrating since I've seen it many times. I'm recording this that you know what to look for if you record yourself. So sometimes record yourself and observe yourself uh, what you're doing. So the first thing, if you're not doing it right, is that your eyes will go away. So you see my eyes already away. I'm not watching the ball anymore. And that is the first sign of panic. That means you're, you're not calm and then the head goes away. So on the right side you can see that i'm tracking the ball all the way to contact point so no matter how low is the ball try to watch it i mean we can't watch it as well as the pros but we can try and come as close as possible so note how low is the ball here is just maybe slightly above the height of my ankles and i am completely calmly watching the ball and and playing it with good control so i don't panic i don't panic because i've seen already a million balls like this and i know that they are not dropping down like this i know how the ball flight is so i know that the ball flight is like this and i will calmly intercept the ball before the bounce so you see it's in the middle so on this side the player is in panic so that's one the first sign 
is not watching the ball. The second sign is just running through. So you can see here fit that I'm just kind of running through. That means I'm in panic. And on this side, I'm stabilizing and positioning and slowing down. So even though I'm reaching the ball at basically the last moment, I have stabilized my foot and I am slowing down for the shot. And when I feel that the shot is done, then I can allow myself to come around and I'm immediately recovering. So positioning to recover. And on this, in this case, you will see the player that, you know, they are so panicked and they're so interested in seeing what happens with the ball that they completely forget about their feet, positioning, recovery, and so on. And so tennis is a complex game. I wish it were easier, but it isn't. And so as soon as I hit the ball, I have to look for stabilizing and getting back. So you can see I, I'm already pushing off backwards and ready to, to recover. And on this side, I am not. So again, I'm showing you a specific situation that's going to happen in the match. That's quite a difficult ball. But my point is that the way you're going to master these situations is that you're going to learn to wait for the ball when you just do free hitting sessions and you stop jumping into the ball all the time and trying to take it early. But you learn to wait for the ball sometimes and see if you can hit it at very low contact point by watching it really well, stabilizing well, staying calm and getting a nice trajectory upwards. And when you master those skills in free hitting sessions, then you will be also much better in realistic situations in the match like this where you will have to control a difficult ball and you won't panic. So hopefully you have seen the big difference between hitting a low ball in the wrong way and hitting it in the right way. So there's problem with technique, there's problem with ball control. You're not watching the ball mentally, you're in panic state compared to staying calm, watching the ball, having calm, cool, collected mind, knowing what you're going to play and having much better ball control. So how do you practice this? Well, how we all practice it. So when you have a free hitting session, don't always run into the ball, experiment by waiting for the ball. What will happen quite a few times over the next few weeks and months is that you will misjudge the ball and the ball will bounce twice. But you have to see that in order for your ball judgments to improve. So you have to, you have to make this mistake. You have to let the ball bounce twice sometimes or not let but misjudge it and that's why we do this in free hitting sessions because you're it doesn't matter really you miss the ball either you try and keep this one in play or take another ball and continue the rally so no big deal let's go on but you're getting some feedback based on the ball judgment and what happened so practice in free hitting sessions and be focused on watching the ball really well and staying calm because now you will have to override months, maybe years of having this anxiety when the ball is low and it's going to come up again and your eyes are not going to be down on the ball. You're going to be looking something like this. So you have to retrain yourself in terms of physically to keep your head down and really try and see the ball and mentally to stay calm and also with your feet that you don't just run through in panic mode, but that you try and calm down and stabilize. So I'm gonna do a few free hitting shots here with my assistant Tina today and try to see that sometimes when I get the ball high, well, I will play the ball high. If I get it here, I get it here. And if I get it low, I get it low. So I'm trying to hold my position most of the time behind the baseline and I am practicing hitting balls at different heights because I will need that skill in the match situation. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.